Are you ready to tackle the installation of a lock pod slab on site? With these seven simple steps, you can confidently complete the task. To ensure a smooth process, be sure to gather your tools, including a reciprocating saw and electric drill driver. And don't forget to reference the engineer's drawings to ensure you're starting in the correct location. With careful preparation and attention to detail, you'll be on your way to successfully installing a lock pod slab. Let's dive in. Step 1. Removing lock pods from the stack. To efficiently remove lock pods from a stack, ensure the stack is positioned on its side, then grab the pods from the back and pull on the two funnels diagonally from each other. Voila! The lock pod shuffle. Step 2. Placing the lock pods. The lock pod is designed to connect effortlessly with its click and connect system, making installation a breeze. When four lock pods are arranged in a block, each quadrant forms a new quadrant equivalent to the size of an EPS pod, measuring 1090mm by 1090mm. This means the lock pod can seamlessly substitute industry alternatives without the need for re-engineering. Step 3. Using extenders. Our specially designed extenders play a pivotal role in the process. They are used to seal off the lock pods at the slab perimeter and around internal beams, as well as facilitating work around piping. The extender for both the lock pod 300 and 225 consists of two easily separable parts, allowing for precise positioning to minimise concrete usage. The extender 150 comprises three parts, with one part serving as an adapter to connect different lock pod sizes. Step 4. Working around pipes. When installing lock pods around piping, you have two options. You can either use a hole saw to cut out the pipe precisely or cut out one turret where the pipes are located. It's crucial to cut as close to the turret as possible to ensure the Rio bar cradle remains intact for easy installation later. Extenders can be used to fill any gaps, either as standalone pieces or connected for larger gaps, with a recommendation to tech them together to prevent movement during the concrete pour. Checking of extenders is only recommended when two or more extenders in a row are used. Step 5. Handling step downs. For a step down from a 300mm pod to a 225mm pod, simply connect the two sizes. For a step down from a 225mm pod to a 150mm pod, the lock pod extender 150 must be used to bridge the sizes, ensuring that the gap is closed and no concrete can enter. Step 6. Form board and star picket for step downs. Utilize the form board around the slab as usual for step downs and follow the typical process for star pickets. Star pickets can be added between the spaces of the turrets or hammered through the lock pods if necessary. Step seven, placing the steel. Now that the lock pods are in place, it's time to lay down the steel. The Rio bar should be placed in the inbuilt cradles, eliminating the need for additional steps. Installing the mesh is equally straightforward. Simply drop it in the inbuilt bar chairs and you're good to go. The offset between the bar chairs ensures that the mesh crossing always fits perfectly. Any overhang caused by extenders can be addressed with traditional bar chairs to keep everything secure. Congratulations! You've completed the installation of this innovative slab solution, laying the foundation for a solid structure. Starting point for slabs designed for EPS pods. For slabs designed for EPS pods but utilising lock pods, an alternative installation method is required at the starting point. Mimicking the EPS pod starting point involves cutting out one turret of the lock pod and splitting one lock pod in half. This establishes the starting point, after which all lock pods around the perimeter are similarly halved on the X and Y axes. The rest of the installation process remains consistent with the standard lock pod slab installation. Lock pod, the smarter slab solution, brought to you by the Australian Reinforcing Company.